Look, I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a really good video. I, I just, I know it. I know it because the thing about this individual, Nicholas Bolin, I love watching him minister. I love watching him preach the gospel on the street and he's not afraid to pull up anywhere. He went to a pride festival. It looked like it's just him and a cameraman and his loudspeaker and he's preaching the gospel. But he does it in a way that's like so composed, it's so gentle, it's so kind, it's so loving, but it's so bold at the same time. He's not going to compromise on what is in the Bible. He's going to tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. But I think he keeps it very respectful. Bro, I'm trying to tell you, this is going to be a video right here. Let's get into this. Uh, it says uh, street preaching at a wild pride festival. This is part one. I know the video is a little bit long, but trust me, I think it's going to be worth it. All right, let's go. I'm going to link all his stuff down below in, uh, in the description. So if you want to support his ministry, support his channel, I'm going to link everything down below in the description. All right, let's get into it. I grew up in a religious family. I grew up Catholic. On my mom's side, they were divorced. My dad went to more of a Pentecostal church. So I went to both churches, but me, myself, I would not have, I would claim to be a Christian. What's up? Why are you just talking at instead of talking to? I'm talking to you right now. What do you want to talk about? I mean, up until I came up to you, you were just talking at. Well, no one came up to Why talk to me. Why not ask questions? I'm talking to you guys and no one has come up to talk to me until just now, other than the people who came out from the Central Bank Center. Then I'm, put, I'd love to talk to you. Put down the microphone and talk to them. Well, I can't reach all these people without amplification without, of my voice. Without performance. You want to perform something. Why don't you talk to them? What's been performance? This, this. Have are you, you seen any, you any theatrics or anything like this? Yeah. It's yeah. just because I have a voice amplifier doesn't mean I'm performing anything. You're performing. This is a performance. This is a performance the same as the drag performance in there. This is a performance. Well, that's an opinion that you have. Yeah. This is actually, what do you think? this is actually the love of God flowing through me, bringing the message. I don't think anyone would agree with him. I think he was expecting like a roaring applause. Like no one agreed with you on that point. ...of salvation. Why don't you talk? Talk to people. I'm talking to them right now. What do you mean? You're talking at them. How is this? Unclear to you. Okay, well, let's talk. Okay, ask what me what you want. Do you know that God loves you? There is no God as far as I know. Okay, how can you prove that there's no God? The burden of proof is not on me, that's simple logic. Simple logic, explain that simple logic. The burden of proof is on the person who says something exists. You just said it doesn't exist, so in the same manner... I said I don't believe it exists. You believe it exists. I don't believe it exists. That's so, different. the Bible says that by creation itself we'll know that God exists. So this tree that's over here growing, the grass that's growing, these bushes, the flowers that are blooming, by you even standing here breathing, the ground that we have, it says by that itself we'll know. Can you, can you tell me... Can you tell me one human? Big Bang? That is a what? God's creation, honey. That's, that's the, the Big Bang, Bang Theory? Exactly. It takes more faith to believe in the Big Bang Theory than it does God. But at least I don't so, so hang on. How about the other Bronze Age texts that you don't listen to? This is a Bronze Age text that you think says truth. There are dozens and hundreds of Bronze Age texts from people who had Bronze Age understandings of the world from thousands of years ago that claim truth. Our understanding is advanced, and you cling to one Bronze Age text. What? The because Bible. Because you feel it? Because you feel it? Your feeling has you out here pushing something that is countrywide oppressing people, which means this is an act of hate on your part. You didn't let me answer your question. Answer it. You kind of cut me off. So your, your question was, why do I believe in the Bible? You called it a... It's bronze Age. Literally a Bronze Age text. Yeah. Okay, so we believe in things that are other history books throughout history, right? But the Bible, it's a book. You're right. It is a book. There's a bunch of words on pages, but there's no other book in history that has so many different people who compiled their writings and were founded throughout history that were brought together and that aligned with one another to confirm exactly what's in the Bible. There's literally no other history book 
that comes close, that talks about any other person that comes close to as many different documents from different people over a huge yeah. right. span. Okay, wait, he's 100% correct. I just, I couldn't get out the, what she just said. She said, what about Wikipedia? What are you talking about? Look, whether you like it or not, the Bible is the most reliable text on this planet. Whether you like it or not. Most people aren't going to do the research in order to confirm whether that is true or not. I know that that's true. Based on the research, based on what I've seen, based on what I've read and compiled and studied, the Bible is the most reliable text on this planet. It's up to you to put the time in to, to research that and, and, you know, figure that out for yourself or not. But if it's or not, then look, it is what it is. You can live the life that you want to live, oppressed by your sin, and that's fine. But I'm just here to preach the gospel. You know what I'm saying? I'm just here to give you the good news. But let's see where this, this is getting kind of, I don't know why he came with that energy. This dude with the ball head, and hey, shout out to all the ball heads, because I got a ball head too. You know, it's, it's all love. But this dude with the ball head, I don't know why he came so confrontational. Because Nick did not roll up confrontational. He was just really just talking. But let's see where they take this. A history that proves and, and relates to one another. So just in that itself, it proves that the Bible is the most trusted history book throughout all of history. And if that's the most trusted history book, if you're if you're gonna believe, hold on, if you're gonna believe a book that says the Big Bang Theory, so someone mentioned the Big Bang Theory. If you're gonna believe a book about a Big Bang Theory based on studies that are like 60 million plus billion years ago. Studies weren't 60 billion years ago, that doesn't make sense. Big Bang Theory goes back millions and the millions of years. Are, the studies are not. But we're not debating the Bible. The we're studies would have presence. to be based on no. evidence. Do you see you take the mic when things become uncomfortable for you? It's you not, take the mic? I'm not uncomfortable. You just did. You took the mic when things got uncomfortable. We're not here to debate the Bible. We're here to debate why you're in this space at this moment during this event. Why are you here during this event? Yeah, I can answer that. First off, you, you're the one who brought up the Bible. So that was just responding to what you brought up. You but brought why up am the I... Bible. You were quoting the Bible as you walked along here. Yeah, yeah, I was quoting it. And then you asked me questions about the Bronze Age and all that stuff. The reason I'm... Some people just don't like God. That's what it is. By nature, people don't like God. By nature, people are rebellious towards God. And I mean, he's just a prime example of that. Because, I mean, we can have a conversation. We can have a, a conversation about why I'm here, but you're not even going to be here to listen to that conversation. <laughs> you just want to win a debate. You just want to feel right. It is because God, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come down. He walked just like me and you in the flesh. And Jesus was tempted in every way, but he never sinned one time. So Jesus, no, you, what you he wanna, earned with his talk. life, I'm you telling talk, you, you, let's talk. you asked me, just quoting Bible verses. you asked me why I'm here. Would Jesus, I'm no, telling you why I'm you here. here. Hey, would Jesus, because God you loves here? you and he sent his no, no, son no, 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 on a don't rescue don't mission to save you. Why are you here question. today? Because God loves you and he wants your soul not to go to hell. He wants your soul to be with him for all of eternity. Any sinner, any sinner, including myself, before I had repented and believed in Jesus, Every sinner, the Bible says the punishment is death. So, so yes, the, the Bible is clear about homosexuality being sin. So that's, that is a sin. Okay, okay, I hear, I hear a lot of no's. Now I hear all, a lot of these, all these people are suddenly theologians. <laughs> come, come on, come on, come on up here and tell me why it's not. I have a no. Okay, so my question is, would you be fine with, uh, say people who wear a hijab protesting outside of your church because they think that the women in your church should be covering their hair would you be okay with that would i be okay with them protesting outside my church yes i would go talk to them just like you're talking to me i would find out what they believe why they believe it would you not feel uncomfortable would you not feel uncomfortable that people are telling you that you're going to hell and that your women in your life are going to hell because they're not following religion how you're not following it how they see fit. 
Well, they would have to prove to me why what they're believing is true. And then I would I would examine myself and be open to receiving the truth. I'm not going to be closed off and, and closed minded. I'm seeking the truth, the true truth. So I would talk to them and see, OK, do they have the truth? And then after talking to them, seeing why they're there, I would examine. But my issue is that everyone here knows what the Bible is. Everyone here lives in the U.S. and they've grown up, a lot of us, in religious families. We know the stories. We know that you think it's a sin. You're not changing anyone's mind. You're just here because you don't like it and you want to talk about not liking it. And, like, if people did it outside of your church, they're not there to, like, listen to you and change their mind. They're there because they don't like you. And that's what you're doing here. You're not going to change anyone's mind here. You're just here because you don't like us and you're not happy with us doing what we want to do. Well, you're speaking for everyone here now as if you're the spokesperson. Insane. It's funny because she really didn't say anything special, but I guess, hey, that's what they want to cheer for. No one is going to turn away. Here, listen, if you go, if you go to YouTube, I preached, I preached at a gay pride event just like this, whatever you want to call it, down, down in my hometown, and a person right at the end of the event came up, and he turned away from this kind of lifestyle, and he turned to God, and he continued. He continued in the faith. So that means... You can't speak for everyone here and say no one's going to turn. Many people, I realize, many people are not going to receive the why message, but... Bro, y'all got to... Why y'all mooning this dude? Why are you mooning him? First off, you should be in jail, ma'am. I did not ask to see that. You should be in jail for real. That should be... That's assault. Is that not sexual assault? <laughs> I don't understand some people, bro. If you don't like what's being said, just move along. I'm here. I'm here speaking for him, for God, not the church. Do you know what a false prophet is? Like, is God genuinely in your brain right now? Because as somebody who has grown up in church, I never once heard God. I prayed to him multiple times to take the gayness from me. He did not. Listen, pardon my language, but I wanted to kill myself. I prayed to him and I begged, like, please, I don't want to be this way. Please do something for me. And you want to know what I heard? Nothing. He did nothing for me. He abandoned me. If he does exist, he doesn't care about me. And why would I want to pray to a God who preaches for his people like you, preach that we're going to go to hell for loving people, for presenting how we want to present. Like how is why should we die for that? Should you die for I see you have a wedding ring? Should you die for being married to your wife? No. Should we die for loving people who maybe look like us, same gender as us? No. Why is love a sin? Why should that give us eternal damnation? Why do you think that's okay? Why would you want to follow a God that says it's awful and it's bad to love somebody? Love thy neighbor, right? It's a valid concern. Let me see what he says. It's a valid concern. Look, I think a lot of people, like she was saying, this woman right here with the purple hair. Uh, hold on. Go, 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 go full screen. This lady right here with purple hair. She was saying, we all know the Bible. We all know the stories. We all grew up with that. But that's a problem. You, you don't know the Bible. You know what people have told you about it. You might have heard some, you know, Bible study, Bible stories in Sunday school, but you don't actually know the Bible and you don't know God, the one who wrote the Bible. You don't know him. You don't have a relationship with him. And so you think that he hates you because of this certain lifestyle. But it's really that God is so holy, he can't even have any sin in his presence. He doesn't hate his creation. It's just the fact that God is so holy that can't even sin can't even be in his presence. So he said, you know what? I don't hate you. Actually, quite the opposite. I love you so much that I sent my son down to die for you so that there could be a way that you could be in my presence. But that was a valid concern. Let me see what the response is. So the Bible says that God is love. So just an opinion of love. If God is love, then God is queer. Why? A man can't love a, a father, can't love a son. A son can't love a father, a brother can't love a brother. 
No, men can love one another. Well, you, you said you said of God's love that He's queer. Romantic love. You know what I'm talking about. You're putting words in my mouth. I mean romantic love. Love isn't just between man and woman. It's between man and man, woman and woman, person and person. It can be between multiple people. It's not just man and woman. And for you to think that that is, that's it. That's all it has. Like all it can be. So like why? Like there are so many different people out there, and you're like it has to be man and woman. You have to be a man or a woman. Why? With how many people, there's like what, 7 billion, almost 8 billion people in this world, and to limit it to just two little things. And you think that doesn't encompass everybody. And I would think Jesus also, I always kind of interpret it, he was asexual to me, right? He never experienced sexual desire to anybody else, so Jesus was probably queer himself. He was tempted in that way. Okay, I mean, anyway, but Jesus, <laughs> till then, do you think he would be proud of who you are? Do you, one, do you think Jesus was a white man? No. From where he grew up, no. I think he took the descent of the same people in the in the Middle East. So no, I, I don't think he's a white man. But but okay, are, are you gonna let me respond now and not just walk away? I guess. I'm okay. Gonna, okay. So first off, you came up and you asked me, do I have God in my head? Do I hear God's voice? Yeah. All that stuff. So yes, God does live in me by the Holy Spirit, and yes, I do hear God speak to me. Yeah, God's inside me. He's living inside me. No, the Bible says that that his people will hear his voice. So, yes, God is living inside me. Yes, I do hear him speak to me. I have conversations with God and you can, too, if you'll if you'll come to Jesus. But you heard of religious psychosis, right? Like you've heard about like um, mass. Uh, what's it called? Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria, right? Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever potentially thought that maybe because all these people around you, your church has been telling you that this is how it is, that you never even question it. So the question is like, maybe I'm kind of crazy because this has been drilled, like drilled in my head over and over for how old are you? You're yeah. probably in your 20s. So for like 20 odd years. Yeah, it's just wasting time. Yeah. Just wasting yeah. time. You, you, you said you're going to stand here and, and you said you're going to let me respond. But you're going to say your piece and walk away. Okay, so... Hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond to her question, even though she's walking away right now. She can probably still hear me. So, she's talking about being religious crazy. Is it just where I grew up? And what about people who grow up and they believe in Islam? Or they believe in Buddha? Or they believe in uh, Hinduism? Many different gods. Why is Christianity truth? And why are those not truth? Am I just taking it because that's what I was raised in? And the answer to that is no. Actually, I was seeking truth at one point in my life and I had many doubts just like she was talking about thinking she's crazy those are actually thoughts when she was growing up and being in church that she was having is this just information people are feeding me am I just crazy for believing all this stuff why not just go do what I want to do right so I used to be uh, I used to sin just like everyone else I used to sin I used to sleep around a lot before marriage I used to get drunk five times a week I used to wake and bake I used to take cocaine I used to take mushrooms I used to go to raves I used to do a whole lot of stuff okay I used to lie I used to steal I got arrested she said you're wearing mixed fabric so you're still sinning <laughs> that's the issue that's what I'm saying like some people they get a little bit of knowledge about something and then they think that they know the full picture that's pride that little bit of knowledge that you have of old testament law that little bit of knowledge that you have that doesn't mean that you have the full and complete knowledge of the scriptures that's just pride for real but that was funny that she said that multiple times i was facing a felony charge uh, of over a year in prison different things like that so i'm not here to say hey look i'm perfect and you guys are all imperfect i'm not here to say that but i'm here to tell you that i too was doing my own thing at one point in my life and here's here's where it got me and i bet many 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 of you can relate to this i had anxiety i had depression i had suicidal thoughts i had a lot of bitterness i had a lot of hate i had a lot of rage towards people because of people who had wronged me, because of girls who screwed me over, because of my parents who were strict and were hypocrites at times. I had a lot of issues inside of myself. On the outside, it looked like everything was going good. I joined the military, I was in college, I was gonna be a financial planner, make six figures, probably five. I'm not taking anxiety. that. You have anxiety here. Oh, Jesus took it away. 
I said I had anxiety. Is she just walking around with Xanax? Y'all. <laughs> okay. So I had all those things and I hit rock bottom in my life where I was fed up with everything in my life, though I was making all the decisions to have a good life. Just like everyone, no one makes decisions to have a crappy life. No one makes decisions to get it suicidal. No one, no one makes decisions to try to be anxious. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't grab your mic, don't grab So no one wants to be depressed. No one wants to go to jail, but I was making my own decisions and that's where it got me. So, so here's what happened. I started reading the Bible, right? I started reading the Bible and the things that were Bible started to become real in my own life. I started to see the same things that Jesus was saying, the same peace that it talks about that cures anxiety. This hey, them demons is manifesting, boy. Them demons is manifesting. Same joy. I'll, I'll answer you in just a second. I'm answering her question still. I'm still answering her question. So when Jesus, when I turned to him and I gave my life to him and said, Jesus, be my king. The anxiety left. The depression left. I no longer needed the alcohol to get drunk five times a week to, to wash away my worries. I no longer needed. No, I'm not gay. I'm straight. No, I have a wife and two kids. I'm not making fun of anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I turned to Jesus, he took all that stuff away where I had financial problems. Now I have every meat net. I'm not saying I'm rich. I'm not saying I live in a mansion, but I'm telling you that I have no lack anymore in my life. I'm not worried about making my bills. I'm not worried about anxiety, depression. I literally have a true peace. I have a true peace. I don't need medications anymore. God healed me. I had back. I had messed up back. God completely healed my back. I've seen people. I've seen people. Why are you going behind him like that? What's going on with these people? Stage four cancer who are completely healed on their deathbed, completely healed. So that's why I believe the Bible is true. That's why I believe Jesus is true. Look, he's handling this. He's handling this situation very well, because I'll tell you something right now. I get claustrophobic. I don't like people surrounding me. I don't like. So, I, bro, he's handling he's handling this very, very well, because I don't know if I could sit there and have the same amount of composure that he has in this situation. So, yo, massive respect. Can I ask you a question? What's up? Is it because of the cooties? I'll, I'll answer you. Is it because of the cooties? What? Is it because of the cooties that you're here? Is it because of the cooties? Is it because what do you mean by cooties? cooties? The, the, you don't know about what cooties We're are? We're so bad pretty. No. Because if I had a dollar for every time, like, you, I heard the same thing. Like, I'd be at the bottom of the ocean right now. So I'm just wondering, like, is it because of the cooties or, like, what's up? I'm just curious. Nah, it's because God loves you, bro. I have a question. Hey, here, here. I'll let you ask your question. <laughs> I, I just want to make a statement. I was born and raised here in Lexington, Kentucky. I live in Atlanta. I came here for gay pride. Um, I got my masters. Yeah, I'm smart as let me hold it like this so can oh my gosh i have my masters you have your masters but do you have god like woo, I, it doesn't really matter i mean like shout out everyone who has their education that's great that's amazing that's incredible um use that to provide for your family right but that doesn't have anything to do with your relationship with god I make six figures. you make six figures but do you know god it doesn't matter Keep your sick t uh, Look, you make 10 figures. I don't make 10 figures. Do you know God? Do you know God? I grew up in the Pentecostal church, in the old church on Martin Luther King. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. And this type of rhetoric caused me to self-hate. This type of rhetoric had me out living homeless at the age of 18. Okay, wait, I'm going to let her finish. I feel like Kanye and Taylor Swift. I'm gonna let you finish, but hold on. What type of rhetoric? What was he saying that was so hateful? He was asked a question. They said, is homosexuality a sin? According to the Bible, he said, yes. He was very respectful about it. He even looped in personal testimony to show that, hey, I'm not just here just bashing on y'all. Look, I was in a, a, a life of sin as well, but God delivered me from that. I swear some people are so sensitive. 
like it's it's a, a mixture of sensitivity and no pun intent no pun intended and pride as well when you're sensitive and you're filled with pride it's going to be very hard for you to open up it's going to be very hard for you to let god in because your heart is so hardened but let me let her finish i respect what you say but this isn't the place for you to say it. Not yeah. This is the space that has been designated for us to be. You have your space. Oh, I grew up putting flyers in people's doors. We had street meetings. We talked about the love of Christ. You have your time. Allow us to have ours. So, so you you just said that you went into the streets, that you had street meetings, and that you're. Why do people ask? Why do people say something and then walk away? going out and trying to reach people. So if, if I knew, if I know what God did in my life, if I know how terrible my life was truly when I was just doing my own thing, trying to make it on my own. And I know what God did in my life and how much he loves and how much peace he can give and how much he loves each and every one of you here. It would be really, really hateful and selfish of me to stay in a building with four walls with a bunch of other people who know what God can do for them and to not come out and tell anyone else who's lost, who's got cancers, who's got anxiety, who's suicidal, who's suffering with shame and guilt. And Them demons is manifesting. It really ain't no reason for you to be making out like that. Like, what are you doing? Like, are y'all some adults or some children? Because I can't tell. Look in the mirror and you hear voices tell you that you're ugly and you hate yourself. It would be really, really selfish of me to stay in a building with four walls. If you guys can truly see it from my perspective, not not be closed minded. But if this is true, if what I'm telling you is true, then it would be real loving of me to come out and try to tell other people about it rather than just stay in a building and be selfish you don't know him though you know about the bible just like the pharisees and the, the religious hypocrites but you don't know jesus okay so uh yeah everybody i got a question how many y'all love y'all okay so in my standpoint i'm sorry to say i understand he's speaking church right now but all that because everybody out here lives their own life yeah. I'm sorry, hey, bro, Granted, uh, okay, oh, like, well, yeah. there's, kid, there's kids. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, children, but granted, everybody grown. Everybody I mean, well, knows what goes on in life and your life. But we my don't question need, is, this right the, here is not the love what we that need. God has shown you, granted, what's stopping you from showing it to other Gran people? Granted, granted, the, granted, you're here to show love. I give you that. You're, you're here to show love of God. But sometimes God tells you to shut up. I'm a minister myself. Sometimes God will tell you to shut up. You're a minister yourself? You came on a mic cussing like that in front of kids? Telling the preacher to shut up? And you talking about you a minister? You're, oh, I got to see what this dude talking about. Go ahead. And sit around them. Sit around them. Learn them. Before you start trying to talk about, oh, oh, you're going to hell because you're gay. Or you're, no. Send that on somewhere else. You don't know me. I don't, I don't know you. Yes. You don't know my So, hey, hey, bro. Hey, hey, real, real quick. Hey, if you want to say your piece, at least, at least let me ask you some questions here. Can I, can I talk about God real quick? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on one second. I like intellect. I would like to know. Okay, so you, you said you're a minister. Where, where are you minister? I minister at Christ Temple. Christ Temple? Yeah, yeah. Charlie at Illinois. Okay. In, in Illinois, okay, and you. So, so you're a Christian minister. Yes, you're a Christian minister. And so you. My family that's out here that I don't. So, I don't so know like none of them. being a I'm being a Christian, you follow you. Fo <laughs> what the heck is going on? The the Christian minister said that's your. She said I'm his baby mama and I'm bisexual. What the heck is going on? Is she serious? I can't. I can't. All right, hold on. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, right? That's right. what being a Christian is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, in the Bible, does it say, be, being a Christian minister, in the Bible, does it say that being homosexual is a sin? No. 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 Technically, no. It's, it's a thorn. I wouldn't say it's a sin. It's a thorn because it's a, it's, it's a mindset. But granted to God, it would be a sin. It's not going to send you to hell. The only thing that's going to send you to hell is forsaking his name. I could be out here gay as hell and still be sent to heaven. So so it's not going to send you to hell? No. 
Does the Bible say it's going to send you to hell? No, the only thing that sends you to hell is for second God's name, if you really read your word. Okay, let me let me read a Bible verse. Sodom and Gomorrah, that's hey, hey, hold up, hold up. Don't don't walk away, bro. Can I say something? Don't walk away. Can I say something? Don't walk away. Hold on, hold on. Can I say hold something? Hold on, hold on. He's a Christian minister. That Bible came out. He turned his back. He said, hold on. I don't want you to put a Bible up. Oh, he's coming back. Uh, I'm going to read this real quick. I'm going to read this real quick. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I don't give a it says, do you know that the unrighteous... Hold up, hold up. Did, did hey, listen, hold up. Say it's a sin? Hey, you now you're being rude to him. Jesus. Now you're being did rude Jesus to him. Say it's a sin? That's right. That's what I'm, I'm about to tell you. So it says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. He said it's not in the Bible. If you got, you can get the Bible app for free on your phone. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So a Christian minister, a Christian minister said that it's not in the Bible that you can go to hell for being homosexual. Listen, I'm not here just to talk about homosexuality. There's many, many more sins that people can go to hell. Can I say something? So can Christian minister said it's not in the Bible, I, but I, there, I, there it is right there in the Bible. Oh my gosh, this I, he should not have give, given her the mic. She about to say something wild. No. You don't have a place here. No one wants to hear you. You're not free of sin. Okay, hello. I'm talking. I'm 21. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm 21. I'll, I'll, I'll respond. My family put me out. I was raised in church my whole life. I'm a Christian at born. Okay. I'm 21. My own family put me out because I'm bisexual. So you come from whatever standpoint. I understand where you're coming from, but everybody, you got wife and kids. I'm pregnant, but I'm bisexual. And God accepts you how you are. So how are oh, you baby. not, so not like, going to accept these people how they are? Somebody take the... Oh, somebody take... No. Hey, no, can I... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Do you want me to... Wait, what was the... What was the... What was the point of that? No, can you I please say something? Sir, can I please say something? Okay, okay so uh, I was raised Catholic. Uh, I'm now agnostic, but I think a big thing that's that's kind of uh, pissing me off about this whole thing is that uh, uh, there's a song I really like called Styrofoam Boots, and it says uh, during the chorus, God takes care of himself and you of you. God takes care of himself and you of you. So there's no f***ing reason. I don't care. Wait, you're getting your theology from a song? Okay, go ahead, continue. Kids are out here right now. There's no reason for you to be sitting out here preaching about preaching God to all these people who don't want to hear it. If he gives us free will, I think it is... Okay, this is my own yeah. standpoint. I think it is redundant to pray to god if you take care of yourself and we are taking care of ourselves that is all i've got to say what do you mean hold on, hold on. what do you mean taking care of yourself i don't understand what he's even saying so the question is when we are created and we are formed before we are put into our human bodies are we not already the way we are meant to be when God creates us? Or are you telling me that I don't become this until society and humanity makes me this way? So are you telling me that my soul here on earth, when I die, is my human body going with me to heaven or is just my soul? Because my soul made me before he put me in my human body. I am who I am before I get here. So, so listen, God did create, he created a soul, he created a spirit and a body, but part of your soul is God has given free will. So, so just because you're created in the womb, if, if you didn't have free will, then everything you ever did in your whole life, every decision you ever made would have been predetermined by God himself. And then you would be correct in the sense that, oh, I was born gay. But God has given, it's biblical, that God gave free will to each and every person, which means that we can choose to not do God's will. That God made us for a certain purpose, for a certain intention, and he's made each and every one of you here for an amazing, amazing purpose. Mm, that was a beautiful explanation. But we can reject the will of God, and we can do things in our own will. So, so no, I, I don't think people are born... What about self-identity? 
What about self-identity? What about what about being raped as a child by men and then you don't want to be with them anymore? Then what is it? So listen, that is not God's will for someone to be raped as a child, but it did happen. It did. It made it my will to choose not to go that path, right? It made it my will to say, you know what? These people hurt me because we all have free will. They had free will to do this to me as a, as a child, as a female. Now, if I was born as a male, as a child, now, how does that make it any different than who I was already born to be? We all have free will. We all have free will, but I have a soul that was already created before I was sent here on earth. And my soul will go to heaven. My body will remain here. Well, if, if, if your soul, God's going God's gonna to judge us based on our works, which proceed from our decision making that comes out of our heart. But th listen, this is what the Bible says. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. So what happened to you as a child? That was not God's will. That was the devil's will and twisted up, perverted men who were evil who did that to you, which does create problems. But Jesus said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. So Jesus can heal your broken heart. He can heal where you were pain. He can heal those wounds from your past. And he can he can help you to walk in his will and his amazing plan for your life. Can I pray for you? Yeah, can I say one more thing? I am walking Jesus' well. I am perceiving his name and I am preaching in his name because I'm telling you, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ and the way I am and accepting who I am today, I can love you even though you don't love me and accept me. I love you anyways. I love you too. I love you. But listen, that, that that's where free will comes in. Like accepting yourself as yourself just as you are. God will, if you come to him in humility, he'll accept you right where you're at. But then what he'll do is he'll help you through this life. He'll help you to overcome those pains in your heart. He'll help you to overcome those traumas from your past so that you're free from them so that they no longer are in a way controlling your decision making. And then you can use your free will to truly follow in Jesus's footsteps and be truly healed. Like I'm sure you still have hurt. You still have things in your mind uh, the, from that trauma and things like that that still influences uh, the way that you're living your life and still hinders you from even making decisions you know are good for you. Mm. And that's because of those hurts. But Jesus, I'm telling you right now, Jesus will give you a brand new heart, mm. literally a whole new I, heart. I, I don't need a new heart. I, I don't need a new heart. I was given my heart for a reason. It's this strong for a reason. I survived what I survived so I can help other people survive. Yeah. I don't need a new heart. I don't need a new heart. How can I help somebody else with a new heart when I am putting the broken pieces together so somebody else can put their broken pieces together? I don't need a new heart. God already gave me my heart. So so I love your desire to help other people and, and to do things like that. But if you're telling me about the trauma that still affects your decision making and still affects you from doing what you know is good in your life and still you've got broken heartedness, then in a way you do need healing in your heart to be able to fulfill all that God created you for. Yeah, I got a What's up? Person. So, I appreciate you, you said I could pray for you. Where'd you go? She gone. Dude, she gone. I gotta go Father, home. heal her heart right now in Jesus' name. Set her free. Amen. So, I appreciate, you know, God loves me, God loves you. I appreciate you're here. Um, I do hear you read out of Corinthians, which is great. Um, but I work in a faith-based facility. I work for the Isaiah House. And something that I was told very early on was that all the stuff in the Bible that tells us what we shouldn't do is in the Old Testament, which is before Christ, right? And AD, after Christ, New Testament, says there's only two rules to go to heaven. And that's to believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior with your mind, body, and soul, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. So Jesus literally died because he knew that we would all sin. He knew you would sin, he knew I would sin, so he forgave me for those things, regardless of what I do. There's no difference in a murderer, a rapist, a gay man, like all sin is sin. And as long as I continue to acknowledge that on a daily basis, then I should still be forgiven, correct? So Jesus, many times he would like minister to someone healing or forgive their sins or something. And then he would make this report, this remark to go and sin no more. That, that's Jesus' words coming right out of his mouth. And there, there are many places, even in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is New Testament, and it says love is this, and love does not envy, right? Love does not do this. Love is this. So there are do's and don'ts still in the New Testament. But you're right. God does forgive all of our sins. When we come to him, we turn away from them and ask him to forgive us. 
because of what Jesus did on the cross. It's this exchange that takes place. Right. No. And, and then we're forgiven. And what, what the Bible says, it says we're no longer a slave to sin, but now we're a slave of righteousness, right. which righteousness is doing what's right, which is God's will. Sin is doing what's evil or wicked or the opposite of love. So we're no longer bound by sin. We're no longer a slave. We don't have to obey the sins that we were doing. But when Jesus forgives us, it says he removes our sins away from us. So it's not that we're walking in our sins still. It's he, he actually forgave it, washed us, cleansed us. And now it says that we're made a new creation, that we're actually born again or born of the Spirit. And then He helps us by the Spirit. This is a Bible verse. It says, by the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the body, which is talking about sin, saying put them to death, which means when you put something to death, you don't like bring it back up and, and continue in it. Um, so Jesus, actually, His grace doesn't just forgive us and leave us in a bad situation. He actually rescues us up out of that situation and He empowers us. We can never live, uh, we can never do His will without Him. We can never turn away from a lot of those sins without Him. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can actually live in a newness of life and not commit those sins. And I hear that. So, and I hear that. But what you're saying is, is that Jesus says, sin no more. But He also knows that with free will, free will, we're going to continue to sin. You can't tell me that a pastor who preaches, who says, I won't sin anymore, doesn't still continue to sin. So how does that work? Because we're still going to sin regardless. So. So, so the Bible is really clear in multiple places in the New Testament, but there's a difference between accidental sin, a stumbling. The Bible says, but if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. So if we sin, it's like you walking down the sidewalk. You don't mean to stumble and fall flat on your face, but you accidentally did it. So we can accidentally sin, but then there's what's called willful sin or practicing sin. So if you practice something, you don't accidentally practice basketball. You don't accidentally pick up a ball, throw it in the hoop. You're actually practicing. You know what you're doing, and you're actually getting good at it. Mm. So when we willfully continue in sin, there's a verse that says, when you willfully continue in sin, there no longer remains a sacrifice for your sins, mm. but a fearful expectation of a fiery punishment. So, so so the difference is willful. If you know it's a sin, God will help you to overcome it. And then throughout your life, he'll perfect you more and more. Basically, he'll help you to grow in love mm. more and more and help you to overcome those sins and no longer walk in them. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to uh, let him finish. I'm just going to end with this because I have to go meet some friends. I appreciate that. Um, it also says in the Bible that those who teach will be judged harder. So be prepared to be judged just as hard as we are. Yeah. Thanks for the warning. It's true. It's true. Hey, I respect that interaction. I respect it. It's a very cordial interaction, you know. And it's funny, he says he works for a faith-based organization. Um, you can't tell me that, you can't tell me that you can just go on willfully sinning, just throwing the grace of God in the trash, just throwing the, the finished work on the cross in the trash and saying, you know what? He did it, so I, I don't got to do nothing else. I could just continue, you know, getting high. I can just continue sleeping with whoever. I can just continue watching whatever. I can continue doing whatever I'm doing, and I'm good. You can't walk with that heart posture and truly believe that you have submitted your life and, and put your faith in Christ. This woman just keeps coming back and asking more questions. What's she got now? What do you got now? I have to be very careful. I'm representing God. You said that you hear God's voice in your head and he speaks to you and tells you what to say. So you're a prophet. Every Christian, there's gifts of the spirit that God can reveal himself through us and speak through us. She's trying to set it up to say that he's a false prophet. But am I a prophet? I wouldn't say, hey, I'm a prophet. Could I be a prophet? Possibly. but. But, you're but either way, a, any Christian, the Bible says, my sheep will hear my voice. So but, any Christian can actually can hear the voice of God. One more thing. Okay, say. Okay. The Bible says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ra ravid ah, ravaging wolves. And so by speaking for God and saying that he's telling you to say all this hatred, how are you not one of those ravaging wolves? Ooh, right. Because, Ooh, because it's too. biblically based and because... This is about love. It's not biblically it's the motive based when you say God is speaking to heart. you. 
Yeah, it is. No, you're saying God's in your head. That's not the Bible. That's you saying, God told me to say this, so it's okay if I say that you guys can't get married. It's okay if I say you guys can't live how you want, even though it's not harming me. You know God would have befriended us. He was friends with people, even if he believed that they were sinners, because we weren't hurting anybody. Where are you protesting whenever the church is abusing kids, when the church is molesting children? Where are you protesting the church? So I, I actually, I started out, I started out today talking about religious hypocrites. So I actually, literally, I started today with talking about religious hypocrites that have hurt people, just like you're talking about. So I'm preaching against those people too. In the Bible, it is biblical that God is in us and that he speaks to us because it literally says that Jesus dwells in our hearts. And it, it literally says God makes us his temple, which means a temple of God. A temple is a house. It means God makes a Christian his house. And the Holy Spirit literally lives inside of us. I'm not, I'm not judging you. So judging would be me putting down a gavel and saying, hey, you're guilty. This is the sentence that you have. Just just a, a police officer who, who tells you the law. Hey, listen, you are going 75 in a 60. So here's the ticket. He's telling you what the law is. So me telling you what God has said, that's not me judging you. If I was to say, hey, listen, I'm not saying this to you, but if I was to say you're doomed, there's no hope for you, you're going to hell no matter what, that would be judgment. But I, I'm not here to tell you. I'm actually here to tell you that you you can have hope and that Jesus, if you'll turn to him and put your faith in him, that you don't have to go to hell, but you can know him and live with him. I go to church, I'm here. I go to church, I'm here. But y'all don't see us outside waving pride flags and judging y'all for going to church. So why the hell y'all out here? Why the hell y'all out here fucking us while we're trying to have a good time? Go to so, church and preach somewhere. If we want to go to church and we want to hear, a, if we want to hear a preacher, when we at church, we ain't gonna come to no pride festival. We're at the pride festival to celebrate us to have a good day time, not to listen to this bullshit. In other words, we trying to sin. That's what she really. We she said we trying to sin over here. So bring that holiness, righteousness. Leave it at the church. We over here trying to sin. We know we walk in in in, in darkness and we like it. That's what she said. That's that. Well, that's what I heard when she was speaking. So you missed the part earlier. I'm not going to repeat myself, but if I know that God is real and that Jesus, I've seen what he did in my life. And if I just stayed in the church and preached to other people who know the same thing and never reached out to anyone else who's got anxiety or depression like I had or who's suicidal like I was or who's got hatred and bitterness and heart heartache and all those things like I did, that would be real hateful of me to come out and to do something like that. Um, she this? said something else. I can't remember what it was at first, but I was going to respond to this. If you're just here to talk to us. If you're just here to talk to us, why are you recording it? Because why the internet are you recording this performance. It's not a performance. It kind of feels like it because you per you record the performance, don't you? Is that not what people do? Record performances? Is that what How they much do? Money you hope to so the Bible itself is people who are recording. That's not what I'm They're saying. recording everything that happened you throughout know, Jesus's life either. and through his history. So now I don't have to have a writer. I don't have to have someone sitting back here writing down everything that y'all are saying. Now we've got technology that can record everything that's happening in the same way so that the message can go out to so many more people. The internet is a way that you can reach the whole world. So you asked me why I'm recording, so I'm just giving if you a response. To talk, you a if question? you're here to specifically talk to us and try to get us to listen, this is not the way to do it. Except you sit God, there and you say. talk to us. You don't sit and record like, oh yeah, cool, I did this today. No, you're here to specifically make yourself better than how you actually are. Dude, that is I don't fully understand exactly what you're saying, but just just because I'm recording, that that, that doesn't change that doesn't change anything with with my heart for everyone who's here in love and for God's will for them. I'm gonna let her answer real quick, and then y'all can. So, if you have a purpose here to reach, go to the highways and byways, as Jesus said. Gotta talk. Sorry, this way. Don't you think it's a bit exploitative to film and then put it online? Of people that you're engaging with that they're most vulnerable do you not find that that's wrong no because the bible does the same thing that there's a woman named mary magdalene and it specifically says out of whom was cast seven different demons seven different spirits it talks about a woman who had uh five different husbands the guy she was living with. that's a really good point that he's bringing up right now right now she was not married to so the exploiting of the sin it actually just shows where jesus can take any sin and forgive any sin and it shows his mercy 
to, to rescue someone out of that and to still love them and adopt them as his own child. So this, this is just like the Bible. Everyone reading the Bible, what happened 2,000 years ago about what Jesus can do for people. And this is a similar thing. It's just a recording, just like the Bible is a recording of what, of what God is doing. So that's very self-righteous to compare this to Mary Magdalene. So at the <laughs> first of all, that's kind of strange. I grew up in church. I started it memorizing. It's very self-righteous to stand up here and talk to a crowd of people and say this sin as if these aren't people just without any aspect of them. Their humanity is what should come first, I believe. And I think that... Well, right, and it's it's very exploitative. Like, I'm in the field of medicine, and I find it very exploitative to just talk at people when it's not welcomed, and I don't think Jesus is a very gentle. He's literally letting you speak right now. He's been having conversations. This whole encounter has been filled with conversations. Entity, and I don't think coming to and shouting or using a microphone or recording them as something that Jesus would do. He says, come to me and I will accept you. But he doesn't say, I'm going to come after you and make you understand why you should accept me. And well, no, and I've been going to church <laughs> since I was, before I was born. And I was memorizing chapters of the Bible by the age of six. So I understand where you're coming from, but sometimes I wonder like, where did how did you get to this place in life where you're speaking so boldly and unkindly toward other people and telling them how they should live you know what i mean like have you ever just considered that you may be wrong and that you're gonna look back and be like wow that was really embarrassing like yeah i, I have considered maybe what if i am wrong but in seeking him He's revealed what the truth is to me. So it's it's not so much arrogance or self-righteousness that I would come here and, and talk to everyone who's here, but it's more loving and it actually would be more humbling for me to come here where everyone is not liking me. No one is wanting the message. But if I know that this is truth and if I know that Jesus loves everyone here and wants to rescue everyone here from the anxiety and the depression and the suicide on the... Oh my goodness, just let him finish. Goodness gracious and the shame and everything humility else is listening. humility Dude. is listening but you're not listening right now <laughs> humility is saying i want to understand you and i want to show you what i have to give you from jesus because of what you know about them and how much more you can further like when you learn about people you learn how to love them and I don't understand how not asking people questions and sitting and not being up here with a microphone as if a spectacle to kind of present some sort of like savior complex or like persecution complex and like why don't you just talk to people and ask them what their lives have been like. I feel like that's what Jesus would do but I could be mistaken. I don't know. Yeah, so, so Jesus, he sent people out, it says even two by two, to go before him and to proclaim the message before him. I would feel like, and she said it herself, she said, I, was, I grew up memorizing the Bible. I feel like if you grew up memorizing the Bible, you would come, you would come a little bit more prepared than that. I, I don't know. I don't know. So proclaiming, that's like something that, that's saying something, no, I'm a, I'm a child of God. So that's just saying he sent them out literally to proclaim loudly. And Jesus, even himself, he would stand and he would proclaim things loudly. Uh, it's, it's just super scriptural all over. He said, go and preach the gospel to all nations and to every person. And you, you said, he said, come to me. But it also says that he left the 99 for the one. So Jesus left the church. If we want to see this, Jesus left the church, all the people who were Christians to come out and to find the one. So if there's even one here today who would turn away from sin and who would come to him and put their faith in Jesus, if there's even one, then Jesus does. He goes and gets those that are lost. Jesus, he actually came to the earth where everyone was a sinner. Literally, where everyone, there was none, none who were righteous, no, not one, none were good. He came to the earth on a rescue mission to save anyone who would believe and who would receive uh, even the, the command of the gospel. Did, did you have anything you wanted to add? 
add to that? Could I add to something that, please? I'm well, sir, I don't. Your story, your so I consider myself agnostic, but what I want to speak about is persuasive language, which is something that people have sort of gotten at. With this crowd, with the way that you are speaking, you are not forming your arguments in a way that actually will convince people. We've all heard what you've said before, and obviously it hasn't resonated with us. I don't consider myself to be a scholar of the Bible. Who knows, maybe I'll die and you are 100% correct, but at the moment you are not forming your argument in a way that resonates with me, that can convince me to go about my life in a different way, and I feel that genuinely nothing that I say could convince you of the otherwise. And to be honest, like, you know, today's my day off, like, I can afford to waste my time sitting here speaking my bit about persuasive language but oh my gosh i don't know what you do normally on a saturday but you came out here to speak at a crowd saying things that we've already speak heard to. you speak to speak my my apologies my grammar isn't the best but i just wish that perhaps you know maybe when you're at home doing your own thing, maybe ask yourself, why isn't my argument landing? What about my argument can I change to actually resonate with the people that I want to reach? Like, I'm Hey, that's fine. If this, if, if what I'm saying right now is not resonating with you, that's completely, that's okay. Maybe I'm not the individual that's going to get through to you um, when it comes to delivering the gospel message. Um, I pray that I, that I am, but if I'm not, that's okay. That's okay. But just like he said, even if there's just one person besides yourself who is impacted and who is saved, then that makes it worth it. And it doesn't even have to be today. It could be the, uh, you know, a seed that is planted over the course of years. And they look back at that moment and, and you know, maybe I had a, a, a contributing role in helping that one person get saved years down the road. But I mean, come on, these backhanded insults are crazy. Writer, this is what I have to do every single time I get down to write. What can I do to form my argument to actually reach the people that I want to go? Yeah, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but Jesus came and he brought a message. He brought a message from God. So it's it's not so much just persuasive. That's yeah, he was. hundred percent. No, he was not a better speaker. <laughs> he was not a better speaker than than what Nick's doing. Definitely not. Definitely. And look at I, look. Just from an adversity standpoint, the whole crowd is against him. He's kept his cool, kept his composure, has respectfully let everyone speak and say what they wanted to say, and has responded biblically to each of those, you know, questions and, and objections. I mean, I don't know what, what more you could ask for. That's why 2,000 years later, we still have Christ. But 2,000 years later, we will not have you. Oh, he definitely voted for Biden. Definitely. I'll be in heaven with him. So, so listen, Jesus. Oh, my Je gosh. Okay. Oh, I see. So upset. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This preached and people tried to throw him off of a mountain. I, I, so if it's just about persuasive I mean, arguments, that's the manifesting again. That's the manifesting. And Jesus was the best speaker ever. Hey, also shout out to the camera people. They are really doing a great job. So is he watching you Jesus, he they literally watching? hated him. Oh, no, they hated his message and they crucified him. They kidnapped him in the middle of the night, beat him. He was completely innocent. They beat him. They tortured him. They crucified him naked and still continued to make fun of him and mock him. So to think that everyone's going to receive a message and there's a good way to do it sometimes uh, for everyone to be able to receive, it's Jesus is the perfect representation of God. And many times people hated him and killed him. And he said people hated him because their deeds, because their deeds were evil and they wanted to keep doing uh, sin. The Bible says sin is pleasurable. It says sin's pleasurable for a short time, but it soon leads to destruction. So some people like the pleasures of sin, but the long run of it, it's going to bring destruction in people's lives. And God made a better way through his son, Jesus. 
I promise I won't be long. Come on up. But you believe that everyone is made in God's image, correct? Yes. So my question to you is, now, I, I would like to speak on the perspective of someone who was born intersex. And if you don't know what that means, I was born with um, some of both, some female, some male. Now, if I was born in God's image, why did my Christian well-meaning parents and Christian well-meaning doctors thought they had to change me? Why even now do people still reject who I am if we are all beautiful in God's image? It's, like, it's, it's that why do bad things happen conversation or argument that a lot of people have. So, if you are created that way, there is what's called the fall of man, which just like if you were created that way, I know that it's true that some people are and possibly you were. There are people who are created uh, or who are birthed and they're literally connected to another person. There are people who are born and they're, they have cleft lips or there are people who are born with deformities or things like that. But that doesn't mean that that was God's will for you. That has to do with the, the fall of man and the sin that entered in. And even there's things called uh, generational curses that can come down from four generations that can can actually bring things like that to take place. So we still love, but shouldn't we still love those people? 100%. Yes. God, it even there's a parable where he sends his messengers or servants out to get the lame and the maimed and people who are in that kind of situation, uh, whether it's talking physically or even uh, mentally or their life or whatever it is, it's probably both ways. Yes, God loves each and every person and everyone can come to him just as they are if they'll turn away and say, OK, God, I'm willing to submit to you as my father and and actually seek you for why you created me why is my creator and i desire to do life with you then then why do then why is it that i am rejected for who i am for circumstances i have no control over who i love what how my body was made by honestly people like you people that represent the christian church my parents so many people have cast me out for nothing I had any control over. So just like I can't stereotype you and say you're just like everyone else who's here, you can't really stereotype me and say I'm just like other Christians who have rejected you um, because of the way that you're made. Now, if someone's rejecting you because of the way you're made, that's completely wrong and that's not right. That's not okay. But there's a difference between who you are and the things that you do. So who you are um, j just because I do something doesn't mean that's who I am as a person that's just a thing that I'm doing or just a decision yeah, see, that I'm making this. Like, this is who we are like none of us here are like doing sh like we're all here because of who we are not because of what we're doing we're doing something because of who we are but I don't I this don't is think us, you man. understand the, the difference between those two. So, so who are you? Well, I'm me. Who are you? I'm, I'm Nicholas. But you're, you're saying you're here because it's, it's who you are. But you're connecting, you're connecting who you are to a deed or an action or, or even a lifestyle. You're connecting with who you are on the inside with actions or things that like that that are, that are taking place. But... You're not? No, I'm a Christian who happens to be gay. A Christian who happens to be gay. Story, man. Well, you, you could be a Christian who's turning away from that and God is helping you overcome that. No, but to be a Christian mic, man, and to no, willfully. Look, tell her story. What, what happened with me was I wanted to know if my salvation was going to be secure, okay? Because that's important to me. So I went for a whole year celibate trying to find what God wanted me to know, all right? So I, I took my daily walks with Jesus and I asked him, I said, look, you know, we're going to settle this. And so I want to know your truth. I don't want to know everybody else's truth. I need your truth. So I ask you to speak to me right now. And we kept walking and talking. And what he told me was, he said, lust is the sin. Love is not a sin. Amen. All right. So he said, if you're loving a person, that's not a sin. And I don't care about that. That love is what we're all about. 
And that's what cares and that's what matters. He said, <laughs> lust can happen to any one of us out here. It doesn't matter if you're homosexual or heterosexual. That's what the sin is, all right? Being gay is not a sin. Mm -hmm. Loving somebody is not a sin. But if you're having an unnatural relationship, would that not be considered lust? You can love, I can love my best friend, I can love my dad, I can love my brother. But if I'm choosing to be in a relationship with somebody and everything that comes with being in a, in a relationship with that person of the same sex, is that not lustful? The, the act, you're right, loving someone, true, truly loving someone is not a sin. And you're right, lust is the sin, but that's where it comes down to the difference between love and lust it's a mess and, of the heart. and God's God's plan and God's will in in what I, love yeah, is. These people are. Okay. No, you, you, you know, these people are listening. I can't I can't commit uh, if I steal now, from someone has, just because my family. Hold on, hold on. Have you had an if experience I, you like said, mine? Have you had an ex a personal experience with Jesus Christ like I have where he came to you and told you and then also made in a, a street where there wasn't one and baptized you himself? Have you had that experience? I haven't had that expensive ex that specific experience but yes i have walked she said jesus himself baptized her interesting talked with the lord and had conversations with him yes i have so so lust you're right lust is a sin but it, it specifically says in the bible in multiple places about men sleeping with men and women sleeping with men women have the holy spirit explain that to you because you got it wrong. It's biblical. No, the, the Holy Spirit has literally. explained it to me. You can't read, you so can't can try to try to explain it to me. You can't read it literally. You go with the Holy Spirit and get your truth. Okay, well, explain to me no, what the I'm truth is. No, I'm not going to give you my truth. You got to get your truth. Okay, I didn't want well, that's. I mean, we so we have two Christians, quote unquote, right? Who's bearing more fruit in this conversation? The Bible says you know them by their fruit. You came on the mic hot, argumentative. Defending your lust, defending your sin, right? Look, you can um, struggle with a sin and then give your life to Christ, right? But you got to turn away from that lifestyle. You can't make justifications for your sin. You can't do it. If you're constantly making justifications for your sin and constantly trying to convince yourself why it is okay, you're not a Christian. You're not. That's, in a way, that's selfish of you if I'm seeking truth and you're not going to speak it to me. Everyone's Everybody has the same, though. Right. You may get a different truth than I get, and that's fine, but it has to be your truth that you sought out for yourself. But we're talking about truth according to the Bible, not from ourselves. You're seeking out my truth, and I got it. All right? I can go all the way back to Genesis because that's where we started. And he said, the reason that Sodom and Gomorrah was stolen, and, and I'm just, oh, yeah, it was stolen by all the thievery and all the adultery that was going on. All the men came to greet them. That means even the little children. All right? It was a. It was uh, are children men, though? I don't, I don't know about that. The place just run over with hate and, and a, everything that was going wrong with that place. He wasn't about to save that place, but it had nothing to do with homosexuality. So, so explain to me then the verse that says a male lying with a male as with a woman and how it speaks of that negatively and it speaks of a punishment that's going to take place because of those you? things. Why don't you not take it out of context and read the whole verse? Male is man lays with boy. Oh, yeah, lays I can read boy. it to you. I can read it and then you can explain the truth. No, because you're the reading the version that's not true. You know how many versions of the show me, Bible Show me the version. Do you know how show many me the version the you're talking about. Bible has been rewritten countless of times over the years. You're sticking to one when there are hundreds. Yeah, the Bible was translated. The Bible has been translated a lot, but it's been translated faithfully. It's, it hasn't been translated and manipulated. It's been faithfully translated so that people can get the word.
and understand the word and apply the word. I've done that. I've looked at the Greek and the Hebrew, and it, it literally means a male lying with a male and a woman lying with a male going after strange flesh. And uh, even where it says uh, homosexuals and all that stuff, it's it's very clear in the Bible. Another woman is not strange flesh to me. Well, to God, in His eyes, it matters more what He says than just our opinions. Even what I think. God cares about the matter of the heart, and He knows my heart. My brain is what messes me up, but my heart is all for Jesus. So if I go in w with a good judge, if I go and I rob a bank because my family's poor and they're on the point of starvation and I go and I rob a bank, I take all the money and I come back and I feed my family with it. Is it still a crime of robbing the bank, even though even though the motives of my heart were because I love my kids and I don't want them to die of starvation. The motive of my heart, even the action that I did, does it make it okay? Does I'm saying, does the action make it okay to do that, even though my motive is love? Well, I, is stealing okay, or is a judge actually gonna well, gonna is convict stupid. me of a crime? So, Why would you that's steal that's money and not food? Being it's fucking stupid, are. dude. Yeah. So it's it's still a sin. So even you you you're trying to say just because love is in your heart, the act of homosexuality it makes it okay because it's love and not lust. But biblically speaking, it it's a it's a sin that's taking place regardless of the motive of the heart, the action. The action can still be I, can still be a sin. Dude, the point sure, is hitting I'm him in the face and he's second. missing it. Hello. Okay. So I see your shirt says repent and believe I'm Jesus is king, forever. right? And honestly, you do realize that, you know, everything that like the Christianity, whatever, freedom there's freedom of religion in America. Legally, yes, you can believe that. But you do not you do not have the right to push this on everyone else. Everyone else has the right to believe in what they believe. You can believe that gay is a sin, even though my personal belief it isn't. But right now, you are out here spending your Saturday, your Saturday, oppressing these people for what? Because you believe that gay is a sin? That's what you believe in, dude. The rest of us don't. We're just trying to live our day-to-day -day lives, making peace with ourselves. Notice how you you're going out peace here. with yourself. So I have perfect peace. In myself, because it's the peace that comes, the peace that comes from God. But the the, the did, fact that that you're trying to to make peace with yourself means that there's not a peace that's already there, which is a, a shame and a guilt. So listen, I'm not coming here to force anything on you. I'm coming here to bring a message, and you have free will. You have free will whether you're gonna accept the message or whether you're going to reject the message. So forcing someone would be tying you down and saying, hey, this is what you're going to do. Me just talking to you is different. What are you going to say something? I said, Jesus preached love. See, you say you're going to I already have my peace with myself, and I'm still growing as a person. I think you should grow as a person too, especially with this bent mic right here. Anyways, my thing is, why are you out here? Because God loves you, and because I love you, and because sin leads to death. Sin leads to death. Baby, I can love you. A father loves his child. Is that weird? No. A mother loves her daughter. Is that that's weird? You love a sister or a mother. Is that weird? Know. That's fine. I don't have How to know you to love you. That's How old are you? The Bible says How love your you? neighbor as you love yourself, not mm. just love those you know as you love yourself. So I'm supposed to love everyone who's around me because I because I love you with a purity. Let me see. Can I hold the mic? So if you wanted if you wanted to do this the correct way, you should have done it like church. Uh, Christ Church Cathedral and actually bought a booth, gone in there, handed out, <laughs> talked to people properly, not wait out here in the hot <laughs> sun. You should have done exactly what these people did because they actually got a business card to me and I haven't been to church in six years. That is how nice they are. Their pastor is gay. They have a dean of a deacon of a woman. That is the correct way to go about this. The way you're doing it. That's the correct way of go to go about it if you don't care about your salvation. If you just want to continue living in your sin and you don't care about your salvation, then the correct, way, the correct way to go about it is to find a church that is affirming of your lifestyle. Get in that church and just keep living the same lifestyle that you're living and just sprinkle a little bit of Bible in there that's manipulated to make you feel good. That's how you can go about it if you don't care about your salvation, if you don't care about knowing who God truly is and what his plan truly is for you. 
is not. Is not. The way that God set things up, that's not the correct way. It's an opinion to think that that's the correct way, but you said that they, they the themselves are gay. They believe in the exact same they shit that you do. No, you, you said that they're gay. So they they don't what? believe what God what has said in the scriptures. Why does that matter? Because, because, because any sin, because any sin leads to death. Any sin, not just homosexuality, any sin, it leads to death. So I've had a preacher compare, hold on, hold on. I've had, I've had a preacher compare being gay to the same equivalent sin as murder. Do you think that is correct? That being gay is the same as, that, that being gay is the same as murdering someone? No, I think they're two different sins. But all sin, regardless, regardless if it's a little bitty white lie, all sin is going to lead to death. It's going to be a those are a sin. Those seven inch seam shorts are definitely a sin. Why? 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 Because they're Nobody wants to see your man thighs. Nobody wants to see your hairy legs. Like so that makes it a sin. All love is created. Hey, if it's our opinion, if it's our opinion, it's a sin. And God still loves me. No matter who I love. So, I'm sorry. Hey! Excuse me. Okay, uh, I just have a question real quick before I open this up. guys can see a guy came up towards the end of this video and began to blare obnoxious music with a purpose to hinder the gospel but we kept going for nearly two hours wow. and we've made a part two of this video but for the sake of YouTube not dropping the copyright strike hammer on us I'm separating the rest of the event into a second video that will release very soon man oh man oh man oh man oh man <laughs> what we got Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That was a lot to process. That was I don't know how he does that and like remains so composed in those situations. I don't know how he does that. Um what do y'all think about this video? Get in my comments, let me know what you think about this video. Um yeah, man. I'm out y'all. <laughs>